Welcome back to Bytes of Pi. Today we're going over JGrasp, what's new since our last video. This is what's new in 2021. We'll go over JGrasp and uh, certain new features that uh, and settings that should be set when you first start up. We'll go over working with Java projects. We'll throw in a couple of tricks. And finally, we'll go into an in-depth run through with the debug features, the key things that are useful. So let's get started. One of the cool things I like is this new look and feel theme. Uh, by default, it's usually metal, and this is very old, antiquated uh, Windows look and feel. Uh, you can go for high contrast, which is, you know, kind of really sticks out. My favorite is this low contrast look and feel theme. It makes it darker so that it's a little easier on the eyes. I like to think it helps with eye strain, and it uh, just flows better and looks looks more modern. One of the other things that we'll set here is changing a couple settings. The first setting that I'd like to change is the font. I like to bump it up. These little boxes here, uh, if it's checked, it uses the default. If you uncheck it, it'll allow you to customize it. Here I'm gonna customize it to 1.5 times the normal font scale. If I hit apply, you can see it kind of beef up. It's a little easier to see. Uh, we also like to set uh, the indent indentation, I'm a stickler on how my code looks and feels. Usually tabs and usually common tab sets are two and four. Three is weird, I've never really seen three, but that's the default. So I like to set my tab size at four. So underneath the CSD uh, tab here, I'm gonna set the size to four. One of the other things I like is indented braces. So I'm gonna set that. And last thing I'm, is turning off the soft tabs. I'm not a fan of that. So. You can play a lot, realm a lot with these uh, different features. If you want to get to the compiler settings, if you have different uh, JDKs you want to compile with, or if you want different uh, color schemes that, that then the, what's there provided in the default, you can mess around with that. But uh, this should be good enough for me. I'll just hit apply and hit OK. So now we've set up our uh, JGrasp and the look and feel that we like. Let's create a new Java project. I'll hit new. Uh, now there's different types. You can do other diff other projects. By default, it's Java no subdirectories. I like Java project with subdirectories, and we'll get into what that means because it gets kind of cluttered without subdirectories. Uh, I'm going to create a new project name. I'll just say new project and create a new directory. I'll hit next. Now, when you choose subdirectories, essentially it'll put different resources in different folders by default. The only thing we'll kind of cover here is classes and source. So in the last video, we talked about how when you compile Java into machine code, it'll create a .class file. Rather than having them in the same folder in the same location as Java, it'll store them in a classes folder. Your source will be in the SRC folder and the compiled class files will be in the classes folder. We'll create a new folder called new project and it'll create this new file called new project gpj. Normally, if you were starting fresh without any uh, code, you'd hit create, but since I have code I want to copy over, I'm just going to hit add files to project now. And it'll give me the option to locate and find the Java files I want to include. So I created this sample project before, so I'm going to go into its source folder and import these three pre-made classes so I don't have to do that. Now I have a choice of copying or moving or linking. I just want to copy it so that it has a new, it just created a new copy of it. And then I'll hit done. So now in my new project, I'll go into here, I'll go into my new project and source. I have these three uh, classes, the vehicle, car, and boat. Now that we've got done this, what I'd like to do is go over a few tricks. One of the Easiest tricks that I like in any IDE I look for right away is how do I comment and uncomment? So if I select a chunk of code, I can go into edit, comment and uncomment, control slash and control shift slash. So if I want to comment out a chunk of code, uh, this comes in really handy. Once you get comfortable with the shortcuts, you can hit alt shift slash to uncomment it. Or whoop, if I highlight the code and hit alt shift, alt slash, it'll comment that out. So the next thing I'd like to kind of show is a block cut. One of the things I didn't show here, let me go back up one to my other, uh, my sample project is this 
uh, if I had like a text file, it's hard to select and kind of edit. If I wanted to move this particular column in a text file over to here, I'd have to highlight each one individually and paste, cut and paste, and it becomes a pain. What would be nice is if I could just select everything in this particular column and then move it over. This block cut and paste, if I select it, once I start selecting, it doesn't select it in a line anymore. I can select kind of rows and columns. So if I wanted to cut this whole column out, I'll just kind of move this over here. All right, now that I've highlighted, I can cut it. And if I want to paste it somewhere, I can just select where I want to paste it and it'll paste that column in. So you don't want to keep it on all the time because it'll start doing weird things when you edit actual code. But if you're modifying text files, the block edit and paste, cut and paste comes in pretty handy. The next thing I want to cover, how do I indent sloppy code? I type out this particular running class. It's, it's difficult to read. If your code is correct, you can go to view generate CSD and it will create this kind of flow for you and also indent it to, so it looks nice and pretty. Here you can see kind of identifying a loop. Here you can see a decision point for an if statement or an else if statement. You can see how these, these two pieces are linked with the, the dotted line and the, wherever I return from the, the method, you can see this arrow returning out of the method. So it's a interesting way of visually seeing it. One nice thing, I'll remove CSD. When I remove CSD, the indentation remains. Now the CSD, if you have it out of whack and it's not, it, does, it won't compile, it won't generate your CSD for you. So if you have bad code and you try and generate a CSD, nothing will happen. Yeah, you can see it doesn't know because I have bad, I have something wrong with my code. But if I was able to compile, if I'm able to compile it, I can use CSD to uh, make it look nice and neat. Let's save it now. Yep, so uh, I'm gonna save it as vehicle runner. All right, and notice I have a compile issue. If I ever have an error within co in the code, and I don't think we covered this in the last one. So whenever I compile it and I see this, the output down here below, it would be nice to be able to go to the lines. We talked about last time turning on the the line numbers here so we can go right to it. But one of the other features is if I click on it, it will zoom right to the line that has the error. So like for example, this one has an error in line 16. If I click on that, you can kind of see it highlights the line that has the error. So once you start getting a lot of code, clicking on it and being able to go right to the, the file that you care about with the error comes in pretty handy. And the same thing here, I have an error in line six. It'll zoom to line six. Sorry, I click it once. And there I go. Now I'm able to create a CSD, have it indent, fix all my indentation, and done. Okay, so those are some nice tricks that JGRASP provides, uh, especially when you're trying to format your code and like, make it look nice or trying to block comment stuff. Now that we've got into that, let's get into a, a more detailed version of uh, debug. So we covered a little bit last time these tabs down here. This tab has your browse feature. You can navigate up and down through your file system. What if you want to do a little creative find and replace? Like say, for example, I want to find every where it has a single digit, a decimal, and a single digit again. Well, using if I wanted to use regular expression editing, I could do something like this. I could create, uh, I wanna match all digits, zero to nine. I wanna match a decimal place, and then I wanna match all digits, zero to nine again. And then I, if I wanted to replace it, 9.9. .9. So I can, Instead of matching plain text, I want to change this to regular expression. Now, when I hit a find, it will find every every instance in this particular file where I have a, a numeric, a decimal, and a numeric again. So I can find them 
you notice how it's finding all these things that match that particular pattern. If I wanted to replace only specific ones, I can go to a specific one and say, I'll leave 2.5 where it is, but 5.3, yeah, I want to replace it. So I can replace that with my 9.9, .9, find it again, eh, 3.4 is fine, I want to, I'll go look again, oh, 7.2, yeah, I want to replace it with 9.9, .9. replace. And I can keep doing that. So regular expression editing is very powerful. Okay, so one of the concepts we talked about last time is creating a, a breakpoint. I can create this little stop sign in the margin here to say, okay, I want code execution to stop. I'm gonna create a breakpoint here and we'll hit the little debug guy and see what happens. Now that we've breakpointed it here, code execution has stopped here. We'll go over some of these features here. There's a lot of different pieces we won't really cover here, but the key things you want to know about debug is this particular button, which is step four. Uh, some editors have called step over and the step in. The difference between the step four and the step in is that if I wanted to step over a function, I want to keep the code execution going, but I don't want to go into the, that particular method. However, if I wanted to step one of the code to trace into that method, I would hit the step in button. So for right now, we want to go into the function test, so we'll hit step in. So you notice that the execution now has gone to the test method. So we're, we're now into test, and I want to create a new array of vehicles. Now, if I was to step in again, I'm going to go to the constructor of, the, of car. Looking at this, I'm going to go into that particular piece. So let's hit step in again. And now you notice that I'm no longer in my vehicle runner class. I'm now into the car class and I'm into the constructor of that particular car. Now I can continue on. I can, if I hit step in, I will go into the vehicles constructor here at the super. So let's, if I hit step in, now I'm in the vehicles constructor. I'm going to step over and I'm going to set the height and weight. I'm going to step out. I'm going to step over print cart. Now, I could go into the set color method if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. I want to step over that. I don't really care about setting my color. So instead of hitting the step in, I'm going to hit the step four or step over. So I'll go to the end of the function. I won't actually dig into that set color function and I'll exit out. So. I'm back here to my test. I've created my new car. I'm going to step over so I don't have to go through creating a new boat. Now I'm into the loop. I'll step into this two string method. So once I step into the two string method, I'm here in the two string and notice I'm, I'm at the vehicles two string method. If I want at any time to go back that I can see that the, the code execution stack has stopped here. Anything that's on the top, that's where your current code is resting. But if I wanted to go back a level and I wanted to see where I was at before, I can take a look at this variables and eval section over here. And this, at any point in time, you can always see what your current variables are at a certain ex point of execution code. So here at the two string method, if I look over here, this is, I'm inside my, my vehicle and I have a weight of 9.9, .9, a height of 2.5 and a color of orange. Right now I don't have any uh, local variables declared, so let me step over that. Now I have a variable called dis description, and it's got this whole string. It's a type car. Uh, but if I before I wanted to go back, if I wanted to go back, I can take a look at this point when I entered it to string. I can see that my variables are vehicles and V. Now I'm going to print that. Now I have the I have the string for the car built. I'm going to print that out. Now I'm going to go into my second V, which it should be the boat that I created. Now I can see that V is now pointing to a boat. I can step into that and start building for my boat. Now I have a string specific to my boat. I'll return that and I can print that out. Once I'm done with that function test, It'll pop off the stack and I'm back to the end of my main. If you are confused, slow down the video and kind of back up and watch how the code passes control back and forth between classes. 
This concludes the extended view of JGrass. If you enjoy this kind of content, please leave a like below. And if you enjoy this channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.